And overall, I've had so much fun playing around with intention and how I can harness the power of so many different tools, including language, to bring about my ideal, my ideal existence. I really love and value being intentional. And one of the ways I've had a lot of fun playing around with that is by looking at the language I'm using. I found that by being aware of the words I'm actually saying and the way I'm forming thoughts in my brain, I can learn a lot more about the beliefs that I'm actually creating for myself and therefore the life I'm actually creating for myself. I may think that I have a certain intention in mind, but when I break it down, oftentimes what I find is that I'm phrasing it in such a way that my intention isn't being heard or felt. One of the fun ways I started playing around with this was by thinking about specific words in my vocabulary that felt like they weren't really serving me anymore and playing around with extracting them. The first word I really started doing this with was should. Should has been such a fun word to play around with because I think that in general, we tend to use it frequently and therefore it presents an opportunity to really play with it a lot of times throughout your day. I spent some time noticing how I felt when I used this word. What did it feel like in my body? Did it feel clenching and closing? Did it feel opening? Did it feel fear-based? Did it feel abundant-based? I really noticed that when I feel like something is a have-to in my life, I feel much more repelled by it. I don't feel excited to do it necessarily. When something feels like an opportunity, it feels much more open. For me, I really noticed that should came along with this sense of obligation or have-to. I just wasn't digging it. And I began thinking about what am I really trying to say in these instances? I did a lot of fun things like that, either focused exercises or just gentle checking in throughout the day to notice, is this word really serving me? What's the purpose of it in my life? And can I replace it with something that would feel better? And I found that I could, and I have, and it's felt so cool. Instead of saying should, I often use the word could, or if I really wanted to, I could, or I may, or if it delights me, I will, or insert really fun phrase here. And now when I notice there's a should coming up, I get this great opportunity to think about what do I actually mean by that? Is it something that's important to me, this new me that I'm ever developing? Or is it an old program thought that would be nice to let go of? Should's a really fun word to play around with. There's also tons of others. What about the word need? Do you need to? Would you like to? Would it delight you to? Would you feel neutral about doing it? How are you defining your needs? How are you defining your shoulds? How are we creating this whole structure of beliefs that we live by? And are they serving us? Are they feeling fantastic to live with every day? Are they taking us to the next level? What feels powerful? What feels abundant? How can I make my communication more potent through the use of language in this way? I think about this in terms of my videos and how I'm communicating with all of you. I think about it in terms of my relationships with others and how I'm communicating with them. And I think about it in terms of how I communicate with myself. Taking this to the next level, I love doing something that I call tell yourself a different story. When I feel like my thoughts have gained momentum in a direction that doesn't feel good for me, I get an indicator, I get an emotion that feels less enjoyable than my previous emotion. When this happens, I know, oh, okay, it's time to tell myself a different story. I look at the thought that I was just having, think about how I was phrasing it, and I choose to phrase it in a different way. I choose to tell myself a different story. And this story I choose to tell myself directly relates to my intention for my life and for that moment. So if my thought was something such as, oh, Brittany, that handstand kind of sucked right there, and it doesn't feel good to think that, I take a moment and think about, what am I actually going for here? I get the opportunity to appreciate the contrast from that thought and then use it to change it into a positive experience. And I just start feeling it out and playing around with it. Okay, what do I want to be creating? Well, badass handstands. Why do I want badass handstands? Well, because it's fun. It's fun to be balanced upside down on my hands. Oh, cool, okay. So the goal is just to have fun really then, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, the goal is to have fun. 
So the handstands, it's not necessary for them to be perfect or look any certain way because what I ultimately want is fun and enjoyment. Wow, it's really cool that I'm out practicing handstands right now. I know that doing handstands brings me a lot of joy. It's fun just to be playing around with. It's nice to be upside down, even if just for a second. I'm proud of myself for all the growth I've gained in my handstands. And this story builds and builds and it gains momentum in a positive direction that feels really good. And in this, I feel like I'm harnessing the power of language to bring in more intention to my life. I've had so much fun playing around with this. I could talk about it forever. I feel so grateful to the person who asked me specifically about this recently. Your comment really made me feel welcome in sharing this practice of mine. I hope that you've all enjoyed this and gotten something out of it. Thank you so much for being here with me. It's a joy. See you later.